State. It would be the first time. Ground ball off the middle on a leadoff single for Brooks. So the first leadoff man has reached and right on cue. Andres Leal will now come up to the on deck circle. Back up the middle, double play depth. Runner will go. There's a strike to throw down to second in time. The 2 6 caught, stealing great throw by Janord. Had him in plenty of time. He did a nice job, too, as right as he popped up, steadied his feet. That's something that you want to watch. He knew he had time, sets, makes the perfect throw. And the runner's toast at second. Goes after one a little high, hits into the hole at short. Long throw, and what a play at first base. Reaching around the runner for the Pirates was Bryce Harmon. No runs, no hits, no airs. Nobody left on base. Still scoreless in Clearwater. They're trying to get the leadoff man on for the second inning in a row. And they will base hit down to right field. That may roll all the way to the wall, and it will. It's going to be at least two to start the inning. They're going to wave him around second. Here comes the relay, and it's in time. Maglich to Bontez to Villar. It'll be a leadoff double, but he's gunned down going 4-3. Thought he had his first triple of the season, but not quite enough running between second and third. Really a nice piece of hitting. Stays level with it, drives it all the way into that right field corner, Jeff. And like you said, the relay throws coming in from Magic were right on point. Great view on our cameras here. Little in count. Popped it up. Shallow right field. Montez got a late break on it, but here comes... Maglich cannot come up with it, but they have the rundown. They'll throw to first. Stunkel gets it to Merrill. Mel running it back. Now Lawson. And they get the tag. And ended up finishing the tag was David Villar, the third baseman, yep. who would come over. That's effective. Ground ball rolls it to third, and that gets under the glove of Tyler. That's going to kick off the wall. It's going to be a leadoff double for David Villar. And that is the first leadoff man to reach for the Bulls. And only the second hit of less than two outs in the inning. So leadoff double by Villar. He's at second base. One and one is the count here on Montgomery. Montgomery base hit to left field. Here comes the runner. They will hold him. A little bit of a late jump there, making sure it got through. Pair of relievers up for ECU in the pin. One for USF. Fly ball to center field. Brooks is back. That should be deep enough to get Villar in. Makes the catch, and the Bulls will take a 1-0 lead on the sacrifice to center by Duke Stunkel. And the Bulls have a 1-0 lead as Stunkel drives in his 20th run of the year. That's what the guys work on in batting practice, being able to barrel it up. Not going to give you a lot to hit here, but he drives it deep enough into the outfield. That'll score his teammate. That'll really change this game. Coco Bontes singled in the third. Filled with choice in the fifth. One for two today. He has three for 12 against ECU. Lefty and Krasinski. Ground ball off the middle. Seeing I single. It's through. Here comes Montgomery. Here comes a throw from Brooks up the line, and it's 2-0. USF Bulls on the RBI single by Kevin Merrill, who drives in his 22nd run of the year. One, two, fly ball to left field. Back to his left, falling down. Ball came out of his glove. No, oh, it's out of the glove of Montgomery. And it's going to be a tie ball game. It'll be a two-run double for Kirk Morgan. Well, I thought Morgan had come up with the catch initially, but the ball went rolling out of his glove. And they're going to come out and ask about it. It's Coach Kingston. He is going to go talk it over with Scott Inman, the third base umpire. Right now it stands as a two-run double in a tie ball game as of Tyler and Brooks coming to score. Let's take a look at it. Yep. It was in the glove, but as he was going down, just couldn't stay in the pocket. Because you've got the heart of the order, Maglich, Borders, and Janor do up. 
He does. He walks him. His 15th walk of the year. Three walks in the inning. Ducks on the pond here for the Bulls. And just one out for Luke Bagley. He walked the run in. That's the fourth walk of the inning. Three by Engel. And the Bulls take the lead on the RBI walk by Luke Baglitch, his 23rd RBI of the year. Stunkel scores. Merrill goes to third. Zek goes to second. He walks another run in. And that was way up. Janord is 20th RBI of the year. Just his ninth walk of the season. Merrill scores. Zek goes to third. Baglitch up to second base. Yeah, that's going to do it for Engel. Sanders pitch. Ground ball off the middle. That one's going to get through. And so the tying run will come to the plate. And Charlie Organ, who has been on three times, a single, a double, and he's reached on an air. Really a nice piece of hitting there by Parker Lamb. Only the strongest mental players can take something where you're in the bottom of the ninth, down by two with two outs, and still produce a hit. Now they've got a runner on base. Now they've got the tie and run coming to the plate, and Lamb has his first. He's alive at 0 and 2. Really a beautiful out pitch by Phoenix Sanders there. A lot of drop, just not able to glove it after it got a piece of that metal barrel. Uh, Sanders will do it again. Let's see if he wastes it this time. Comes at him, swing and a miss. And the seven seed, USF, will knock off the two seed, ECU, by a final of four to two in the ninth. No runs, one hit, no errors, two left on base. So the Bulls, four runs, eight hits, two errors, 11 left on today. ECU, two runs, eight hits, no errors. They leave 10 on here this afternoon as the Bulls will knock off the Pirates. USF will play tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. ECU comes back for 11 o'clock game tomorrow morning. Post-game show is on the way on the American Digital Network.